Well, that was an interesting couple of years, wasn't it? But hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome back, after a very long gap, to Funky Monkey at the Movies. And welcome back to my nameless producer. Hello. And somewhere in the infinity of the omniverse, I won't have been able to say these words, but luckily for me, this is this universe and I am. And I'm also able to tell you that tonight, we want to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It's certainly another thrilling romp in the Marvel style. The mighty Marvel tradition, you might say. Yes. But, again, carrying on from my house of love about Doctor Strange, as strange as this movie was, I do feel that it could have always stood to be stranger. Yeah, I suppose that's true. He could actually have been stranger, I suppose. He could have had more weird things in. I'm trying not to immediately jump to talking about the moral of the story, or how what I see as the moral of the story. There was a moral to that story? I just thought it was a bunch of stuff that happened. Well, the moral of the story, to me, smacked me in the face. Yeah, what was it? The moral that I could see was the classic moral of be careful what you wish for. I don't know, they weren't really wishing for anything. I suppose it was the whole them being asked if they were happy kind of thing. Or maybe it's the uh, old one of uh, gazing into the abyss and the abyss gazing back into you and, you know, the fanatic being one who redoubles their efforts whilst losing sight of their goal. Yeah, I think that's more like it. It it was definitely more of a um, the ends justify the means sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, it is a tragic end for the Scarlet Witch. Oh yeah, that's what I thought as well. There was like no redemption. I mean, I know there there were a lot of people online who were saying that sort of thing about Wonder Vision in that like she was really the baddie and and people should stop rooting for her. But then, like, to make her an out-and-out villain and then just to kill her off. If, in fact, they have killed her off. Yeah, that's what I do wonder. Spoiler alert from here on out. Because we did get a Doctor Strange Will Return credit. Well, that was always going to happen. I imagine every film is going to have a this character will return in it somewhere. And they will. James Bond has a lot to answer for. But that isn't even this show. I think there were too many characters. Oh? Yeah. Well, and they were all doing... Well, they weren't doing different things, but... It was kind of a... It it suffered a bit like um, Captain America 3, which was almost like an Avengers 2. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because then you had, like, Wanda's storyline, so it was less about Doctor Strange. And you had America Chavez, and all about her... And that took away from Doctor Strange. Well, you could say, in a way, that it was partially WandaVision 2. Yeah, kind of. It was sort of like the Kappa movie, like you might get with an anime series that has its own movie at the end of it. Yeah, maybe. But I felt it kind of took away from Doctor Strange. I didn't like the end, either. Not, Not generally the way the story ended, just... Like, right at the end, where he's coming oh, out of his house and then the suddenly, very ending, he and suddenly, suddenly sprouts third, a third eye. Yeah, third eye opens. I mean, he's already got the eye of Agamotto. How many eyes does he need? He does seem to be in control of it. Yeah. As some of the other strangers are. Yeah, I thought, I mean, like, in the comic at the moment, they've killed off the stranger and the players, like, the new sorceress who brings. Mm, good for her. Yeah, that's funny. Spe- I mean, I do like that they've given Wong the title now. He's deserved it. I mean, it's a good time for him to be in the spotlight at last. After all these years, as the character has been the manservant. Yeah, manservant, housekeeper, sort of person. It's good that now he gets to be Sorcerer Supreme and manage Kamotage. Yeah, yeah, because... Doctor Strange kind of goes around doing other things. He's not really the managerial type, I suppose. Yeah, he's the adventurer type. Yeah. Which is a lot, which is more what a lot of superheroes are, really. They're adventurers, even as much as they are crime fighters. But this is like a massive tangent yeah. you could go off on about adventuring and crime fighting and what any superhero 
actually represents an, uh, a recent interview from Alan Moore saying that most superpowers are functionally useless. Yes, I suppose. I don't know. If I suppose they are. It depends on how you use them. That's like the interesting part of the story is when they use these powers uniquely, and you know, it was like when we did that Freedom Force mod, and we had that character who was a speeder, and normally speechless or a bit boring. I always think. Yeah. Then we had that one who had to race against like countdowns to the clock. bombs. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps one day we'll get around to remastering it, if they ever remaster uh, Freedom Force. Hint, hint, irrational. Are they still around? They do the Bioshock series. Uh. The massive spoilery part that we were going to get to, the Illuminati and the uh, reintroduction of several characters. Yeah, I mean, I liked how they brought in aspects from the comics and from the run of um, Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, this idea of the incursions, which is the storyline that brought in like the death of the Marvel Universe, and led into the new Secret Wars, and then they had to like reboot the universes. Well, I get the feeling that that might be where they're going with uh, Kang. Might be, maybe. I mean, Kang didn't really feature in those stories. But well, the Illuminati did. It was good to see Ants and Men come back as Black Bolt. Getting another chance because the Inhumans TV show was a bit rubbish. But they did also introduce Reed Richards. Yeah. I mean, that guy's Reed Richards was pretty good as well. Yeah, he was pretty good casting. I, I think he might be the same guy as the guy from the American office. Yeah, he could be the guy who's from... Jack Ryan. Yeah, That's Jack it. Ryan. I think it is the Jack Ryan guy. Yeah. And it's good to see um, Patrick Stewart come back as Professor X. Yeah. And it's nice that Hayley Atwell finally got her turn with the shield as the big damn hero. Even if she got it right in the stomach for her troubles. Damn shame. Yeah. It seems like... And I don't know what it is. I just seem to find Captain Marvel obnoxious in every universe. Uh, and America Chavez, I actually quite liked in this. She was a lot less obnoxious than the comic version. See? I gave up the comics a long time ago. And all I knew about was America Chavez at the time was that she was something to do with the whole Miss America legacy. And I really didn't know any more than that. But you found her obnoxious in the comics. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and it's just, she was like a B, another B-list character who they were just trying to force into the limelight. Mm, well, there might be enough space in the Marvel Universe for everyone. Yeah. I um, kind of think the film was a bit long as well. I think it could have been trimmed down a bit more, maybe. Yeah. Did they really need to have Mordo be so damn antagonistic? I don't know, I mean, like, because I suspected he might have been one of the villains, but he wasn't really. I mean, he kind of was, because he was another one of those, um... The bill comes due. Yeah, oh well, no, more more of the ends justify the means, we've got to do these bad things to save the world, kind of people. Which is funny, because um, Captain America, in those stories, he actually kind of rebelled against the Illuminati. And they wiped his memory and kicked him out. Because they tried to fix an incursion with the Infinity Gauntlet. Which they did. And then all the Infinity Stones were destroyed in the process. So they were like, well, we can't do that again because now the Infinity Stones have been destroyed. I'm not sure about the tone of this film either. I got the impression he was trying to be a horror film in places. And some of the parts worked. And some of the parts didn't work so much, I don't think. Well, it's Sam Raimi. Yeah, and you could tell some of the shots were very... The, some of the POV shots were very Sam Raimi. Yeah, I did want to get to that. That uh, most of it was sort of Marvel in-house style. But there were a few very noticeable moments of Sam Raimi. Yeah, which I suppose you can expect when you hire Sam Raimi, really. Otherwise, you wouldn't hire him. Yeah. And... Uh, the one thing I can say, though, is that Danny Elfman's score didn't actually sound like Danny Elfman again. 
Um, no, well, when I saw his name at the end of the credits, I wasn't surprised. But I don't think it hit home, really. I don't think it added that much to the film. It wasn't bad, certainly, but to me it didn't really add a lot. Oh, well. We're coming up to that time again. You know. Well, I thought the graphics were good, like the, the special effects. They were all quite good in this. Oh, I did like the, um, the music fight as well. It was quite the spectacular high point. Yes. And an imaginative part. Yes, I like that. Um, so, yeah, the special effects were good, and there was a lot of action. Let's uh, think about a rating. Yeah. I think... Maybe... Uh, eight. Because there was a lot of action, and it was well produced. And while the score didn't really add a lot, it was quite good. Uh, the acting was okay. I thought it was a little disjointed overall, what with the different characters taken away from Doctor Strange. Should have been more about just Doctor Strange. All right, well. I don't feel he had like an arc, like he started here and then went there and then ended up somewhere else. Unless no. you, you count like he started off here, ended up with a third eye. Oh well, I would give it a seven, as you know, it's another amazing adventure, a fantastic fairy tale in the Mighty Marvel tradition, but it doesn't really stray outside the boundaries of the uh, genre, even though it has a few interesting elements. I guess the problem is always going to be now that they're all going to be compared to the Infinity Saga. Well, at least until the multiverse saga wraps up. Ah, uh, well, that should do it then. Yeah. Thank you for listening. The links will be below on the YouTube video. And uh, perhaps we will try and get the mines page up again. Yep. Don't worry about your mines, Bucks. They are what they be. But anyway, this is Funky Monkey and his nameless producer signing off. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.